Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Your Life podcast and YouTube channel. I am Art Burns, and I hope you are as excited as I am. You know, not particularly for any reason either. I just hope that you're as excited about life as I am, you know, because, you know, when we're truly excited about life, that's when we're likely to show up to life, right? And that's the name of the game here on this podcast channel, right? And so, and the YouTube channel. And so, so I, I hope that's the case for you. And today, I'm going to give you some, some, you know, kind of, uh, 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 sort of tips and, and pointers, maybe, if you will, about how to do this, right? Just more tips and more pointers about how to do this, because it's pretty much what we talk about every single day. But before we get into today's topic, I want to just make a couple of very quick announcements, okay? First of all, um, I want to let you all know I'm up to 310 of you subscribers out there, and it is so gratifying. I mean, I've never felt you know, this is amazing that, that, you know, that this community is building the way it is. Uh, there's a, that's just on YouTube. There's a whole bunch more of you on the podcast channel. I don't get quite the same, uh, uh, analytics on that as I do on the YouTube, but it's just so gratifying to know that all of you out there, you know, listening to me and watching me every single day, it's just very, very gratifying. You know, sometimes I actually, I look at the reports like an hour after I post something and like people are already watching and, and listening. I mean, that just, that just makes my heart dance. And I want you to know that. Okay. And if you haven't subscribed, right, if you're not subscribed to either the, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube or the podcast, I recommend you do so. Okay. It'll help me because the more subscribers you have on these different channels, the more they, they show show you to other people, you know, and you, and you can get, it's not for me, it's for them. You know, I want to, I want to reach more people so we can help more people. Um, it's not for my, uh, you know, sort of pride or ego or anything like that. It's just for the effectiveness. So if you, if you, wouldn't mind taking a minute or two. Go ahead and, and subscribe for sure. Do all the YouTube things, like, uh, share, all that stuff. Uh, but also, uh, you know, leave a comment if you like. I love to see the comments. I love to reply to the comments. I love to get into conversations with you. Um, and then on the on the podcast side, uh, if you could take a moment, if you're if the platform you use allows you to rate and review. That is also just like YouTube on, on the YouTube uh, algorithm. If you subscribe, you comment, you share, then I, I rise up on their logarithm, algorithm. rather. Um, if uh, on the podcast side, rating and reviewing is the same thing. So if you and I'm not asking you to be dishonest, if you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and give me a high rating. It will help to elevate me in their algorithm and put me in front of more people, which again, is not about me. It's about helping more people. All right. Because this is an act of, of generosity and altruism that I'm doing here. Right. Yes, of course, there's an exchange. I mean, you know, I, I love to, to get into, you know, working relationships with clients and that's how I pay my bills and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there is that end of it, but I know that not everybody is going to become a client. You know, there's no way. Right. And so, so I'm not, it doesn't stop me from doing this. Right. And it doesn't stop me from, from bringing this value because the value is really about you, right? And I just want you to benefit from this. So, so the more of you there are, the more benefit there's going to be. And that just, that's good for me and it's good for you. Okay. So, so that's just the kind of a uh, little quick uh, announcement here. Oh, and then the other thing, this Sunday, okay, I start my new course called Anger Transform. Now, now one of the people who's who's joined the course, uh, she she actually asked me during the uh, webinar uh, last weekend, uh, you know, if it's only about anger, you know, because anger is just one of the emotions that that some people struggle with, right? And no, it's not just about anger, okay, because the same process is going to apply, you know, wh whether you want to transform your anger or you want to transform your shame or you want to transform your guilt or you want to transform your jealousy, whatever, you know, strong and, and oppressive negative emotions are happening, that's what we're going to be talking about in this 12-week course that's coming up, okay? I've made it as affordable as I can. I really want to get as many people in there so we can help you, okay? So if you're struggling with big emotions and you, you just wish that you could, you know, you wish that you could live without this struggle and without this pain and without this difficulty that you feel from these, you know, the, these emotional patterns that you find yourself in. For me, it was always anger. I've told you my stories, right? <laughs> that poor kid at the pet store where I just, you know, oh, it just spoke such a hard horrible word to him. For me, it was anger, you know, but for, for you, it might not be. For you, maybe it's shame. For you, maybe it's it's guilt or jealousy, or, and jealousy was something for me too way back when, um, you know, but but whatever that is, right, this program is going to help, okay? So if you're if you're interested in it, it starts this Sunday. I'm going to put a link in the, uh, in the, the description that you can join the program, 
Okay, it's just, you know, there's not much advertising. It's just literally a form. So if you have any questions about it, okay, that I have not answered already, then please just get in touch with me, okay? Uh, you can email me at art at artburnscoaching.com or you can book a call. It's going to be hard to get a call in before Sunday, uh, but we can try, okay? Uh, but certainly if you have any questions, just email me, okay? And I'll answer as best I can, all right? But it starts this Sunday at uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, Mountain Time, which is... 5 p.m. on the West Coast and 8 p.m. on the East Coast with 7 p.m. in the heartland right there in the middle of the country. OK, so so if you're interested, please, you know, I, I it's an invitation that I'm extending to you. It's a warm and cordial invitation, and I hope you take advantage of it because it's going to be amazing. It really is. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time now. I've got a lot of skills. I've got a lot of practices. I've got a lot of uh, information that's going to help you to, to live in harmony with your emotions, not at the mercy of your emotions. That is not what your emotions are there to do. Your emotions are not there to 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 cause you to suffer, right? They're actually there to help you. And now I'm going to I'm going to show you through through very simple techniques and practices how you can transform your emotions and your relationship to your emotions so that they are serving you rather than you serving them. <laughs> it reminds me of a joke my daughter told me. So we have two cats that um one cat is more like a dog than a cat. You know, and Giles is the one that's more like a dog, where Skittles is the one that's very, very much a cat. And so my daughter, she's 12, she says, she says, you know, this is Giles. Oh, you people pet me and you feed me and you you change my litter box. You must be God. <laughs> and here's Giles, here's uh, Skittles. Oh, you people pet me and feed me and clean my litter box. I must be God. <laughs> So anyway, I just thought I'd share that joke. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I guess you have to be a cat person to really appreciate that. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's talk today about understanding, okay? Because really, at the end of the day, that's what all of this work is about. Okay, it's about understanding. Now, now let's just first talk about what understanding means, okay? Because it's not necessarily as obvious as it might seem, okay? Um, Thich Nhat Hanh, who you hear me reference him a lot, okay? Because he was like one of the first books that I read that got me into this, this, uh, this world of mindfulness and this practice and this wonderful way of living, right? That, that has changed everything for me, right? You know, one of the very first books I read was called Being Peace by Thich Nhat Hanh, and it changed everything for me. I mean, it literally just changed the way I saw the world just in this 120-page book or whatever it was. Um, and so, so I, I talk a lot about Thich Nhat Hanh. And one of the things that Thich Nhat Hanh talks about in that book and in many other teachings and, and writings that he that he has is how understanding and love are not different things. They're the same thing. So what that means, right, is that if you love someone or something, right, if you, you know, you love a cat, right? You don't love a cat. And, and really the cat is probably the easiest way to look at this, right? Or a dog or a parrot or a hamster or whatever you might have, if you have pets at home. If you don't have pets, we'll, we'll you know, don't worry, you, you'll get it. <laughs> you look at a cat, right? Or or better yet, I think I used the other day a lettuce as, a, as an example, which is another Thich Nhat Hanh uh, metaphor. But, but, but looking at a cat, right? You, you know, if you love the cat, you don't love the cat and want the cat to change, Right. You, you, you don't say, well, I, I would love you if you were brown instead of gray or I would love you if you didn't meow so loud while I was trying to sleep. But, you know, it's like if you love the cat, you love the cat for all of that. Right. Which means that in order to love the cat, you are understanding the cat. Right. You understand that, that the, the, you know, the, the habit of this cat is to meow in the middle of the night. And that's what makes this cat this cat. Right. And I love this cat. Right. And that doesn't mean that that the that the, you know, waking up in the middle of the night with meowing doesn't bother you. It can bother you and you can still love the cat, right? But, but the, the key then is to love the cat in terms of, you know, or, or to, to see the thing that bothers you about the cat as something that you can understand rather than something that you want to change, okay? Now, that concept is really the same thing as what we talk about when we talk about mindfulness, right? It's the, the ability to turn towards the things in our lives, right? Even those things that we find 
to be unappealing and, and discomforting or, 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 you know, somehow, you know, bothersome towards us, right? That, that we can accept those things for exactly how they are. Right. Because what we're doing is we're not trying to change the the uh, the sort of um, attributes of the experiences that we have or the people who are in our lives. Instead, we're trying to understand them. Right. And so and so understanding, you know, can can radiate to everything. Right. It's not, you know, obviously we, you know, you understand like, you know, how the weather works. Right. For instance. Right. So so understanding that, you know, helps you to accept the weather, understanding that the weather is impermanent, understanding that in the winter it snows, understanding in the summer it doesn't snow. Right. Like those understandings that you have help you to accept what it is that you experience in the weather. It doesn't mean that you like the rain. It doesn't mean that you like the cold weather or the warm weather. It, it Like and dislike don't kind of factor into it. It's about understanding. Right. It's about understanding that this is how life is right now. Right. In the middle of the summer, it's going to be hot. Right. And if I can understand that, well, then what I can do is I can accept it. Right. Because when I can accept it, that's when I don't say, oh, gosh, I wish it wasn't so hot out today. This is just so hard for me to be in this heat. and I just don't like it. I wish it was different. I want it to be different. Please, please, please make it different. Now, what you've done there, and this is something we talk about a lot, right? But what, what happens there when we, not what you've done, but when any of us, you know, takes that sort of attitude and, and says like, oh, no, 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 I don't want it to be like this. I need this to change, right? What you're doing is you're taking, like the temperature is still hot, right? Like that hasn't changed. But what has changed is your equilibrium, right? You are now in a place of suffering, Right. That has nothing to do with how hot you are. Right. It has everything to do with how much you wish you weren't hot. And that is a big, big difference. And that is the key to to, you know, or one of the many keys to all of this work that we talk about. Right. All of this this mindfulness, you know, living that we talk about. Right. That, that when we're you know, when when we're when we sh you know, when we <laughs> when our goal is understanding then acceptance comes much more readily, right? Now, again, this can apply to everything or it does apply to everything, right? It's not just, you know, understanding the, the route and the nature of traffic when you get stuck in a traffic jam. It's not just understanding the route and the nature of weather. It's not just understanding the route and the nature of money. It's not just understanding, you know, how a child, you know, has a tendency to spill things, right? It's not just that stuff. It's also understanding the people in our lives, right? You know, like, like I talked about the lettuce the other day, right? If you, you know, if you, if you plant lettuce and the lettuce doesn't grow, right? You don't stand there and yell at the lettuce and expect it to change. What you do is you examine why the lettuce is not growing, right? You try to understand, right? You, you come to it and you, 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 you say, okay, what could be wrong with what's happening with this lettuce right now? Why could it be that this lettuce isn't growing? Is it getting enough light? Is it getting enough water? Is it getting enough fertilizer? And generally speaking, it's going to be one of those, right? It's going to be something, right? It's, it's not getting the nourishment it needs on some level. Right. And so when when we look at, uh, uh, but again, what you're trying to do there is you're understanding the lettuce, right? You're not, you're not in an adversarial relationship with the lettuce. You're in a loving relationship with the lettuce because you're trying to understand it, right? Because love and understanding are the same thing, according to the wise Thich Nhat Hanh, right? I didn't make that up. He did. <laughs> um, so, so when we talk about people then in our lives, right, whether it's a, a colleague or, or an employee or, or, or somebody who we have to deal with at the DMV or at the courthouse or something like that, right, there are people in our lives that we can't just cut out, right? It's not possible. We can't avoid them. Right. And so and so, again, mindfulness is not about avoiding at all. Right. Mindfulness allows us to to let go of that idea of of avoiding the people in our lives and instead try to understand them. Right. Because the minute you try to understand somebody, 
that changes the whole relationship that you have to them because it moves you from a place of fear or 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 you know any emotion that comes from fear right which are the negative side of the emotions not bad emotions but negative emotions it moves you from that into the sphere of love right and so and so the the benefit of this right and one of the, I wanted to share another story with you here about this right that um that that Tara Brock uses this story a lot and she's really fantastic storyteller I mean amazing person in the world and we're so lucky that she's here in this world with us um it's like one of those people like it's like I got to live at the same time as Tara Brock so I mean I, more was good about my life than was bad you know that kind of thing I say that about a lot of people I say that about Jerry Garcia I say that about Keith Richards I say that about <laughs> Wayne Gretzky say that about a lot of people but anyway um the, the the story that Tara Brock says is or tells is that you know imagine that you're walking through a forest right and you come around uh, the trail leads you around a tree and all of a sudden you you turn around this this on this trail and all of a sudden you see a dog right and this dog is not happy this dog is very you know it's baring its fangs at you its hair is sticking up on its haunches you know it's 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 growling it's snarling its tail is down you know you its ears are back like there's no mistake that this dog means you harm right like holy crap this dog's going to attack me right that's the vibe but now as you're, as you're standing there in your, you know, like the, the fear that you're feeling, like even as you're listening to me tell this, you're probably feeling this tightness in your chest. Like this is a terrifying idea, right? To be standing there in front of this angry, belligerent dog, right? It's going to cause me, it could kill me perhaps, right? So this is very, very dangerous, right? And so you're feeling fear. You're feeling, you know, alarm. You're feeling panic, right? But now let's say as you're standing there, in your fear and your alarm, you notice that the dog's hind leg is caught in a trap. Now, all of a sudden, your, your feelings change because now you're looking at this dog and you are understanding that the, the, the animosity that this dog has, this anger, this, 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 this aggressiveness, this, this posture of, of, of violence that this dog is, is, is you know, striking right now, it's coming from a place of fear. It's coming from a place of pain. It's coming from a place of, 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 of struggle and of suffering. And once I understand that about the dog, now all of a sudden I'm not so worried about myself and my own safety. I'm now at least in part worried and, and concerned about the dog's safety and the dog's well-being. Now I'm trying to figure out, is there a way that I can, without myself getting hurt, is there a way that I can free this dog from this trap? How can I help this dog? That will be most of our first instincts at that point. So you see what understanding did, right? When we understand why the dog is doing what the dog is doing, that makes us not afraid of the dog anymore, or at least not in the same way that we're afraid. And it also moves us again into that loving understanding where we can now allow our compassion to flow, right? Because our compassion comes from the love that we have. And our compassion is the thing that, that makes us want to stand with the suffering of a dog, a person, a cat, a parrot, whatever, right? It makes us want to stand with that person who is suffering and do something or at least have the, the, the intention that, that we want the person's uh, suffering to be relieved, right? And so, so it's the understanding that allows that to happen. I hope that that you know can I kind of land with you a little bit because that is key, right? That when you know in our lives we're always going to encounter people who who are unpleasant towards us, right? We're, it's it's inevitable. It's part of living. Right. As I say, especially in society, right, you, you know, you can't decide, oh, I'm not going to go to the DMV and renew my driver's license because I don't like the way the people treat me there. I mean, you can do that. But guess what? You're then opening yourself up to a police officer who might be in a bad mood and, and mistreat you because he pulls you over because you had a, an expired license plate or whatever it is. Right. Or if you get pulled over, you're going to experience the consequences of not having a valid driver's license. And that's going to cost you time and money and, and, and energy and, and emotional uh, you know, energy and the whole thing. And so 
<laughs> you know, so again, you know, it's it's like, you know, so so we can't just, or if we do just try to avoid those people and those things in our lives that cause us difficulty, well, then generally speaking, there's going to be consequences for those things, right? Of course, I just use the example of DMV, but we could go through lots of other examples and probably come to the same conclusion on most of them, if not all of them, right? And so the, the, the concept then is, sorry about that. My, my screen just went black. I, I panic when I see the black screen. I'm like, oh no, am I still recording? <laughs> so, so the idea then is like all, that dog, right, represents all those people in our lives, right? So the person behind the counter at the DMV, right, who's, who's given us a hard time, right? And again, whether it's the DMV, the supermarket, the post office, the wherever, right, you know that they're all over the place, right? There's all always, you know, or not always, but, but very frequently in our lives, we're going to encounter people who are, you know, who are going to give us a hard time for something, right? Now, in, in the, the face of it, Right. If we're not truly aware and we're not trying to understand, right, then, then we're likely to see those things as like a tax on us. Right. Just like that dog. Right. When we first saw the dog, we got very scared. Like this dog is going to hurt me. This dog just wants to hurt me. Like for whatever. I don't care what the reason is. All I know is that this dog wants to hurt me. Right. So all I know is this person behind the counter here is giving me is being rude to me and, and giving me a hard time about something. Right. And so so if I just kind of experience it without that understanding, well, then I feel attacked and I feel defensive. And what that's going to make me do, depending on how you process these kind of things, and that's what my course is going to help with on Sunday night. But but so for me personally, you know, when I feel that attack from someone, well, then the only way my body or the, the automatic way in which my body responds is with anger. And so I give it back to them. Right. But what does that do? Right. Usually, just like the story I told you about the pet store. I mean, this is, you know, eight years later, I'm still like I cry over that story. That's a very damaging thing that happened to me. It's traumatic. Right. But if I can understand, right, if I can understand that, that this kid might be behind the, the counter alone with nobody else helping because maybe two people called in sick today. Right. Or maybe the manager is just ineffective. Right. I mean, that's the person that needs to be talked to, not the way that I talk to the kid. Nobody needs to be talked to that way. But but maybe that's the person who should be addressed. Right. Not this kid here. This kid's just working for ten dollars an hour doing what he does. Right. He's just he's just doing what he's been told to do. And if he's failing in that, it's not my place to tell him he's failing. It's his employer. Right. And so so if in understanding that all of a sudden doesn't mean that I'm still not, yeah, I don't have the time. It doesn't mean that I, I'm going to be happy with the situation. It doesn't, it's not like some kind of toxic positivity or as my, my one of my clients this morning said, uh, misunderstood Zen. I can't wait. I'm, I'm doing a whole episode on that on Monday and I can't wait because that's just, I've never heard that term before. And it is so amazing. Right. But that toxic positivity, or as, as my friend said, misunderstood Zen, right. That is you know, that's that kind of idea to say like, oh, well, I'll just not let it bother me. Everything's awesome. Life is beautiful. We don't have to get angry. That's not going to work either. Right? That's going to get you into a whole world of suffering at some point, right? At some point, it's going to come home to roost. And when it does, it's going to be hard for you. Okay, so trust me, and we can get more into that. We're going to talk about that on Monday more about the toxic positivity and this misunderstood Zen, right? And um, and so so, but the 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 idea is that that's not right, nor is feeling defensive right, right? Like neither of those are appropriate or or constructive or beneficial or or neither of those are going to serve us as as our as people in our lives, right? So what we want is somewhere in the middle, which is to understand it, right? Because again, as I just said a minute ago, understanding what's happening here doesn't make me like the kid anymore, doesn't make me like the situation anymore. But what it does, and this is very, very important, it changes the way that I interface with this child, right? And I do call him a child. He pretty much was, right? And so so when when we can understand that look, it's not this kid's fault, right? He's told that he asks every customer if, they, if they're if they a part of their rewards program and if they say no, he has to hand them a clipboard, right? That's the kid's job, 
right? He did not come up with that system. He did not, you know, this is not his brainchild, right? So the person who instructed him to do that, who is probably also the person who made sure that there was no, who, who was responsible for making sure that this kid had help, that's the person who has failed, right? This kid's just doing what he's supposed to do. And so if I understand that, now I can say to the kid something, instead of calling him this horrible name, I can say, hey, man, you know, you should talk to your manager because it's not fair that they put you up here alone. Because you know what? I'm pissed that I had to spend all this time. And, you know, quite frankly, I was tempted to take it out on you. And that's not fair for you. Right? I could say that. And that could have changed this kid's life in a positive way. Instead, I mean, who, oh my gosh, I, I shudder to even think of what this kid like went home and, and how he described what I did. And, and I mean, hopefully it wasn't that impactful for him. That's That's the only hope that I have is that he was able to just you know, think that I was crazy, which I was, and, and just move past it, hopefully, you know, but dude, if you're out there, man, I, I so, I'm so, so sorry for that. And I should have done, I wish I had done what I just talked about. And, I, and let me not say that I, I couldn't have done that then. Right. And that's the key to this, right? I was not able to do that then what I would do now. Right. Because I didn't know the, the importance of understanding and I didn't know how to understand right? And that's the other key, right? That these are skills. And just like any other skill, I mean, sure, some of us are born with innate skills, but that's pretty rare, right? The, the, the key is that any skill that you're developing, you develop in one way and one way only, well, two ways, really. You're, you're learning and you're practicing. Learning, practice, learning, practice, learning, practice, learning, practice, learning, practice, learning, practice, learning. That's what we got to do. And so, so when we talk about, you know, non-judging awareness, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about understanding, right? And how do we get to non-judging awareness, right? We do so through meditation and through mindfulness practices that we're, we're, we're just always dwelling in the awareness of what's happening inside of us with the, the desire to understand it right? Not, not looking inside so that we can change it. Because again, looking at ourselves is the same way that we look at that lettuce, right? It's not looking at ourselves and saying, oh gosh, I, I, you know, this, this one part of me is so horrible. I got to get rid of this. I got to cut it out of me, right? No. Instead, it's saying, why is this one part of me the way it is? How can I better understand this, right? Is it getting enough light? Is it getting enough water? Is it getting enough fertilizer? Am I nourishing myself enough? Or is, is there a lack of nourishment that's causing this part of me, this, this one aspect of myself that I don't like? So if I can understand it, then I can work with it. I can integrate it back into me instead of having it be this kind of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of thing. So it applies not only to the circumstances, not only to the other people in your life, not only to the dogs and cats in your life, but also to ourselves. And it's like physics. It applies to everything. And the best way to cultivate a, an understanding is to cultivate what we call the beginner's mind, right? And the very simple way to, to describe the, the beginner's mind to you right here, right now in the you know, less than a minute that I have left in this video, I always shoot for 30 minutes. Um, the best way to do, the best way to understand this concept of the beginner's mind is simply through curiosity, right? How curious are you about what this person or who, about this person who's saying this thing that hurts you? How curious are you about your own emotions and your own reactivity, your own suffering, your own pain, your own pleasure. How curious of, of, about yourself are you? Because if we're curious, that's when we're trying to understand something, right? If we're not curious, we're really not trying to understand something. It's really that, that simple. So you can ask yourself, and this is a great practice, right? Throughout the day, starting today, starting right now, as soon as you hit uh, pause or stop on this video, I want you to ask yourself, how curious are you right now? And keep asking yourself that. And it's not an exaggeration to say, ask yourself every, you know, 15, 20 minutes throughout the day, you know, set a little timer to ding every 15, 20, 30 minutes to have a ding and say, am I being curious right now? Is there, can I be curious? Am I being curious? And can I be more curious? And if you do that day after day after day, 
you're going to become more curious. I promise you that. And when you become more curious, then understanding is going to be a priority for you. And if understanding is the priority for you, then the emotional reactivity is not going to be the priority anymore. It's really that simple. So if there's something here you don't understand, <laughs> I love you and I want you to get in touch with me, okay? Because this is important and I would love to get on a call. If I need to explain this, I can do so in a call. To that point, there's an opportunity for you in the description for a free coaching session. It's 45 minutes, completely free to you. And, and the exchange is that I get to help you. And, and that that benefits me, okay? Um, so... It's there for you, okay? Last thing, last little book key, housekeeping thing here. Uh, tomorrow morning is the Saturday sit, okay? I don't know if I'm hosting it tomorrow or if my colleague is hosting. I'm about to text him. He's been in Honduras. I don't know if he's back, if he's going to be back, whatever. <laughs> it's just the way. But again, now I could be resentful of that, right? I could be impatient about that or I could understand it. Right. I could understand what this guy's been going through, flying, you know, to Honduras and, and probably working really long hours and probably also enjoying himself on the beach a lot and doing all that stuff. And, and I can understand that where he's coming from, you know, allows me to assimilate the fact that I might have to stand in here and do this this thing tomorrow morning. But I can if I understand it, I don't get angry with it. I don't get, you know, hurt by it. I don't get frustrated by it. And it's all about the understanding. All right, everybody. I wish you well. I'll be back again on Monday. And if you can join us tomorrow for the Saturday sit, please do. Whether it's me hosting it or Adam, it's going to be amazing. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I wish you well. Take care.